And we're back with another video, and today I'm going to play a video from Sean Fain, the president of the UAW. Now, I want to preface playing this video with just a couple statements. I am not, I, I wouldn't say I'm a, I'm a huge fan of this guy, only because I think any maybe freshman in high school could have figured out when he was pushing for these huge, huge record contracts, especially with a company that already had a fairly sketchy past, that he was setting themselves up, all of the employees up for a payback from Stellantis. I think any of us, I mean, all of us, I mean, we were, you read the comments during the, that last strike that they were pushing so hard for so much that the natural concern was, wait a minute, what if that ends up with them completely vacating the U.S.? What if they say, well, we're just not going to um, have employees in the U.S. or we're going to get rid of so many that we're not going to lose any money on this deal? I am taking a ball and going home. Hey, hey, that's not your ball. And understanding that Again, a freshman in high school with one economics class could have probably figured out that if you look up Tavares, he has really one, one tool in his shed when it comes to running a company, and that is massive cost reductions. Massive cost reductions. That's his thing. He's going to get where he wants to get by cutting his way there. Understanding that means that if you're going to pick a fight with a guy that is not going to be afraid to completely eliminate all those jobs, then you go from a, a huge contract and thinking you won to nothing. And, you know, I, I'm all for wanting these people to get what they deserve and, and to be paid fairly. But I also like to be kind of, you know, realistic in that if you twist any any company's arms too far, then they will just make a decision to have less employees. They're going to get their profit one way or another. And that, you know, derives itself back to the expectations from Wall Street and the shareholders to deliver positive numbers. And that ends up being where you just can't spend more money on, let's just say, this employee contract and not raise prices on the cars or cut somewhere else. Well, I think we recognize that Tavares had already gotten pricing so stupid that he couldn't keep raising the prices on the cars to make up for these concessions. So now he painted himself in yet another corner, which is, well, I can't raise the prices on my stuff, so I can decrease the quality of my stuff. I can also, by cutting, and I can also offshore a whole bunch of employees and cut a whole bunch of jobs and whittle this down to where we have just a couple platforms that we stick bodies on and sell them to the general public and it'll cost us less money to make them and we can continue to charge stupid money for them and cut our way to reaching our 2030 325 billion in revenue goal that's that's what they should have looked up they should have read that they should have known you're, you're negotiating with a guy that's willing to burn the place down to get where he wants to get. So listen, I may get blasted in the comments, but I think it's it's reminiscent of of those folks that are fighting for, for massive minimum wage increases in whether it be food service or something else. I, like I'm the first guy to say, hey, look, I, I would have loved to go and work at the pizza place when I was a kid for a living wage. But I got enough to fill my Toyota pickup truck up with gas and maybe buy an amp for my stereo system once every six months and cover my insurance to keep my parents off my rear end. But outside of that, there was no way that was a living wage. That was a teenager going to work, delivering pizzas, getting tips, and just barely getting by while living at home at 16 years old. But now it's come to a place to where, no, we want enough to live. I, I understand that. And believe me, I wish that things worked that way. But the same thing there. The second they win, in places like California, you have mass layoffs 
automation, they're going to achieve their profit one way or another. So, you know, I, I'm not trying to pick a side here because I'm actually like loving the video I'm about to play for you all from Sean Fain because let's just say the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Uh, you know, he's saying the things that we all feel, but for different reasons. So Sean Fain feels, feels the way he feels for different reasons, but I think the end result is what we are mad about, what we don't like what he's done, is turned the Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram brand into a laughing stock, if you will, in America. And it keeps getting worse and worse, and every time we turn around, there's another lawsuit. Carlos gets sued. They're suing a dealer. I mean, you name it, It's the accusations are flying. Now, I also recognize that Sean Fain may not be a lot of people's favorite uh, based on some of his battles that he's having, having to defend. I'm not going to say that he's perfect either, but this is an interesting fight for us to watch. I think you all would agree, which is the purpose of my channel for entertainment purposes and a little bit of inf information. And I'm going to play this video now and not take any more time rambling. So let's go ahead and play it. Something is rotten at Stellantis and Stellantis employees, dealers, and customers deserve to know what's up. Sales are down, profits are down, and CEO pay is way, way up. The problem isn't the market. At GM and Ford, auto sales are up. And the problem isn't the auto workers. The problem is this man, Carlos Tavares. Carlos Tavares is the CEO of Stellantis. Fact, Stellantis CEO Carlos Tavares made $39.5 million last year after giving himself a 56% pay increase. Fact, for years, Stellantis has sold fewer cars but made more in profits. What does that tell you? They're price gouging. Now they've gone too far and they're tanking their own sales. Fact, Stellantis CEO Carlos Tavares is trying to go back on commitments the company made in our last contract, including putting the brakes on reopening the Belvedere assembly plant. And who does the company blame? The American auto worker. But the problem isn't the little guys at the bottom, it's the big man at the top. If any auto worker did as pissed poor of a job as Delana CEO Carlos Tavares, they'd be fired. The truth is, Stellantis doesn't want to invest in America. Stellantis just cut hundreds of engineers and tech employees. Stellantis isn't investing in new battery technology or the transition to a green economy. Stellantis is in a race to the bottom, driving up prices while cutting staff so overseas executives like Carlos Tavares can have a bigger payday. America invested in Stellantis. Workers have invested in Stellantis, and consumers have invested in Stellantis, and they deserve better. It's time to put an end to corporate greed at Stellantis. It's time for Stellantis to invest in us. It's time for a change, and that starts with the man at the top. So the next time you hear Stellantis blame American auto workers, remember who's really to blame. Stellantis CEO, Carlos Tavares. All right. So sounds like there's a little hostility going on there. And I think we all would agree. I mean, nothing would make us all happier than to see Carlos Tavares be kicked out of his position because, frankly, at this point, the unknown would be better than the known. In many cases in the world, the known is better than the unknown because the unknown could always be worse than the known. But in this situation, now I think we're all willing to roll our dice with, uh, you know, uh, uh, anybody. I mean, uh, bring the Joker in from Batman. We'd be fine with him running that thing compared to <laughs> the villain that we've got running now. So I would always, you know, suggest you all go to check out Mopar Insiders. I feel like they've got, you know, their, their finger on the pulse of so much out there. And with this, of course, they were pretty quick to post the video. I found the video actually on Twitter first, but they found it on YouTube and I'll share with you the comments that are going on there. And they, of course, recap those, those statements that were made, but I want to just jump down here to, to, uh, to what we were talking about with Sean, what he was saying. 
and Carlos Tavares's very sad, sad outcomes to his leadership, which is reducing the workforce, global workforce, by 15.5%, or about 47,000 employees between 2019 and 2023. Now, the reason why I wanted to share this is between 2019 and 2023, his, remember, his, the tool in his shed is cut, 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 layoff. So everybody should have known that he's just going to go back to his playbook if he can't achieve his profitability and he's going to cut. And he's going to cut to the extent that even his own executives said that this was an issue. Let's find that paragraph here. Right here, the cost-saving cost measures have been significant, with Stellantis reducing its global workforce by 15.5%, or 47,500 employees between December 2019 and 2023. This includes a 14.5% reduction in North America. Hmm. These reductions have drawn criticism from various quarters, including Stellantis executives who described the cuts as excessive. So even executives... Now, could they be talking about... Tim Kaniskis or any of the other executives that were were gently sent on their way with a different story for each one. I'm going to retire. I'm going to go live in Laguna Beach and watch the Dolphins and whatever the hell the reasons why all these people were gone. Could they be the ones who were saying, um, it's a little excessive. You're going a little too far. I would say yes. But now let's jump over to the private or unlisted video on the UAW site that Mopar Insiders had posted and check out the comments. And I think it's, you know, kind of sad to watch, but it's interesting as well to read because these are mostly either current or ex-employees of Stellantis. So I just want to go back to work. Counting on Bel Belvedere Assembly Plant to reopen, praying they do something about this. Could you imagine being in that in that flux. I mean, that's just sad. Carlos may be removed as CEO, but from the board, based on the performance of the company and the stock, it's been halved since April. The writing's on the wall. Tavarius has been retaliating against our record contract to wear us down until we give in to accept the scraps he throws our way. The time to act is now. So I would imagine they're talking about maybe another strike. Who knows? But some time to act, some retaliation. All we got was a raise and a car program no one is using. <laughs> so, makes sense. I jumped ship when offered a buyout last year. Since the scope scoped up FCA, it's been one layoff after another. I'm not putting my life on hold and holding my breath, hoping they suddenly unprejudice themselves against the United States. Belvedere was never going to reopen, and I'm not going to chase my job around the country. I live here. I dictate my future, not Stellantis. Good for Christopher. Don't forget Belvedere. Thousands are counting on Belvedere. I just want Belvedere to open. Truth always comes out, sometimes a little too late. I just want to come home to Belvedere. Lost my job at Belvedere and about to lose job again at Warren. Years of sacrifice for a company that hates me. What's the point? Well, this is what happens at unions. Uh, we will get you home soon, brother. I mean, this, this is sad stuff. Um, I knew something was wrong when they gave the auto workers a record contract. I mean, I think a lot of us kind of knew that there was a slim slim to none chance that Stellantis was going to stand by them. I mean, you know, it was, they gave in. They held out just long enough. They had enough inventory to hang out quite a long time. And then they got their plan in place, it sounds like. And then here they go. They're going to cut that money. They're going to save that money. Uh, and what are you going to do about this? It's time to take action uh, to own up to your own duties. Don't blame, uh, don't be blaming Boyer. When you sign off on these record contracts, stand up, feign, or get out. So, of course, now people are pointing at him. He's too busy campaigning. Oh, geez. The politics are coming in. Uh, <laughs> union barking. Whoops. Union barking completely kills the message. Selfish union shops, thinking somebody owes them something. If you want to give yourself 50% 50, 50 raise, Maybe set your goals higher than being a windshield guy. So, you know, you've got everybody chiming in here, and no, no one's happy. Only 29 comments, only 8,700 views. So I imagine my video and Mopar Insiders and other people who are doing videos with this video will 
get certainly get a lot more traction. So that's the story. That's what's going on right now. I mean, everyone's pointing at Carlos Tavares. If I was him, I would be thinking, okay, maybe I had to throttle back a little bit. Uh, maybe I took this a little bit too far. But if you listen to his comments in his other videos, and I end all my videos, at least this last few videos, with certain quotes from him. And when he was saying it's not taboo to burn brands, get rid of brands, or it's not taboo to do layoffs and cut expenses, he was speaking for himself because it's clearly taboo because everyone's everyone's against him at this point. I, I got to imagine that there has to be some, some shoe that's going to drop. They paid the dude so much money, almost $40 million. And like Sean Fain said, if anybody else did such a piss poor job, they'd been fired from their job. Well, I think we would all agree from our perspective, which is very different than Sean Fain's perspective and the UAW's perspective, but we're all living in the same boat right now. We're going to get crappy EVs, probably lower quality, probably more problematic cars. They're going to be wrought with problems is what I believe is going to happen. We're already seeing that happen with all the, the cars that they're coming out with now. The Hornet has been nothing short of a disaster when it comes to reliability. So they made their bed. Now what? Carlos needs to go. I think we all would agree. So with that, let me know what you all think about this. Let me know what you think about Sean Fain's video. I mean, that was kind of in in your face a little bit. And uh, I think we all could find some alignment a little bit in that thing. And I will see you all in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye. Of course. And that also means, because that's what I'm hearing, that uh, cost reduction is not becoming a taboo anymore. As you know, we have been working hard on cost reduction for many years. We have not been so popular.